In this video, we are going to use Gauss's law to determine the electric field inside a solid sphere. And we had done this before using the Shell theorem. And now we are going to do it again using Gauss's law. You need to be able to do it both ways. Um, on the AP, it might specifically say to use Gauss's law. In that case, you have to use Gauss's law to derive this. If it doesn't say, then you can go ahead and use the Shell theorem if you'd like, or you can use Gauss's law, either one. But if it specifically says Gauss's law, you have to use Gauss's law. All right, so we've got a solid sphere. It has a charge Q. It has a radius big R. And we want to find the electric field at some distance D inside the sphere. So here, let's just label a few things. The sphere itself has radius big R but we want to find the electric field at some distance d away from the center but still inside the sphere. So step one, identify the symmetry and draw the appropriate Gaussian surface. So our symmetry is spherical symmetry and our appropriate Gaussian surface is going to be a concentric sphere. And it needs to touch the location where we want to find the electric field. So that means our sphere, our Gaussian sphere, is going to have a radius of d. And it has the same center as the charged sphere. On the face of your Gaussian surface, indicate the directions of E and A. Well, E is outwards everywhere and since we have spherical symmetry that means that the strength of the electric field is going to be the same everywhere along the surface of this imaginary sphere that is inside our charge and the da vectors are also going to be pointing outwards and they are going to be parallel to the E vectors. And I'm just going to draw a few of them there. Calculate Q enclosed, the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So we need to figure out how much charge is in just this little bit. We know the charge on the whole sphere is big Q, but we just want to know the charge that's enclosed by our Gaussian sphere, which is a smaller bit of that charge Q. So Q enclosed is going to be the charge density times the volume of our Gaussian surface, our Gaussian sphere. All right, so what is rho? Let's figure that out. Because it's not given in terms of rho in this question, it's given in terms of q. So we're gonna have to come up with an expression for rho. Well, rho is charge density, so that is the charge on the whole sphere divided by the volume of the whole sphere. And the volume of the whole sphere is 4 thirds pi, big R cubed. So uh, rho is going to be Q divided by 4 thirds pi, big R cubed. And then we have our Gaussian volume. What is the volume of just our Gaussian surface here? That is a sphere as well. So that's 4 thirds pi, but the radius of our Gaussian sphere is d, so it's going to be d cubed. And then multiplying that out, our 4 thirds pi's cancel. 
and we are just left with q d cubed over r cubed. That is our enclosed charge. It's the charge of the whole sphere times the ratio of the little radius and the big radius cubed. Calculate the net flux through all faces of our surface. All right, so the flux, we only have one face because it's a sphere, it has the whole face. So that is going to be the electric field, right? Which is the same everywhere along the surface of the sphere times the surface area of our Gaussian sphere. The surface area of our Gaussian sphere is 4 pi d squared, right? Because the radius of our Gaussian sphere is d, so 4 pi d squared. So there's our flux right there, e times 4 pi d squared. And then the last step is to take our flux for pi d squared and set that equal to q enclosed over epsilon naught. And q enclosed, we figured out before, is big Q times d cubed over r cubed. And then we just have to divide that by epsilon naught. Rearrange and solve for E. So two of our D's cancel, right? So the D squared cancels on the left side, and we're just left with D on the right side. And then I can divide both sides by 4 pi. So that leaves us with QD over 4 pi r cubed times epsilon zero, which should be exactly what it said up top, and it is. And if you wanted to, remember that k is one over four pi epsilon zero, so I can take the four, the pi, and the epsilon zero in the denominator, and that becomes k, so I get k q d over r cubed. And notice that the d is in the numerator, and it's only to the first power, so that means that the electric field increases linearly with the distance. Remember, this r cubed in the denominator is the radius of the entire sphere, and that is a constant. So the only variable here is this d in the numerator. So the electric field increases linearly with distance, which is exactly what we got when we did it way back when with the Shell Theorem. All right, hope that makes sense.